Hi everyone, thank you so much for watching. My name is Yadira. Today I'm gonna to be going over my Louis Vuitton handbag collection. Not so much to show you what it is that I have, but I'm gonna be going over what the retail value is currently if you were to go into the store or what it is in the pre-owned markets just to kind of see the value to kind of determine whether or not handbags are actual investments or not. That is a very controversial topic because a lot of people say that they are and some just say it's a waste of money. Let's go through my handbag collection and seeing what it's worth. The first handbag we're gonna go over is my On The Go. This is in the reverse monogram canvas. It has the two-tone coloring. It's in the MM size. So we're gonna go through the retail value of that one first. So it is actually still in production. So you can go into the store and buy it now. Or as I'm seeing it in my phone currently, it is as placed in carts. So if you are interested in this handbag, you can get it right off the Louis Vuitton website. The current retail price for this handbag, again, this is the MM size. It is $3,100 US dollars. That is a lot of money, but this is one of my favorite handbags. I would say if you are looking into buying this brand new from the store, it's something I find very worth it. Now, let's see what it's like in the pre-owned market. For the condition wise, I believe my handbag is in excellent condition. Condition. It is canvas, so it's a little bit more hardy. It can conceal wear a little bit more than others. The inside, it is the textile lining. My handbag is two years old now, so fairly great condition, I would say. So I'm gonna use Fashion File as a comparison. I'm going to filter for that condition type. So they have a lot of options here. And I'm just going to look for a Giants reverse monogram just to make it fair. So here's two. Two. Mine does have the black handles, cowhide in black shoulder strap. So this first one I found does have it in that same variation. They did used to have it also in the canvas, like here is one right here. This is in the GM size, so I'm not even gonna click on that one. So I'm gonna go back to this one. So this is exactly what I have. Currently, if I was to buy it in the pre-love market, it is a little bit of savings compared to the retail. Remember, retail was 3,100 US dollars. And right here, Fashion File has it for 2,000. 1935 US dollars. It's not too much of a price difference. So if you could, I would say get it brand new. But again, you are saving a little bit by going this route and it is, you know, in a hardy material to where it, it's still a good deal. When I got my on the go back in 2020, it retailed for 2530 US dollars. Just on the current price versus what I paid for, it did go up just under $600 in two years. So again, you can save a little bit by going in the pre-love route or just buy it brand new from the Louis Vuitton website. Disclaimer, that is the price before taxes. We all have different tax rates, so I'm not going to go over that piece, but do factor that in and still it's quite significantly different from what I paid for to the current price. Even in the pre-love markets, it's a little bit more than what I paid for, so I would say the on-the-go is an investment piece. Moving on to my next piece, this is a limited edition piece. So for retail purposes, I am just gonna look for a limited edition canvas in the MM size. That is what I'm going to base my pricing off of for the retail. So this is the Game On Neverfull in the MM size. So let's put that off to the side. And I kind of feel like I'm auctioning my items. None of these pieces are for sale, at least not currently. In the Louis Vuitton website currently, for the Neverfull, there's a lot of leather variations, so I'm just looking over for a canvas one. This one seems to be canvas. Um, that one's leather. I don't want to use the one that you can do the monogram or the My World Tour because those are generally different pricing, if that makes any sense. This is canvas. So I'm going to use this blue one. This blue one, I believe, is all canvas. Let me just quickly go on to the bottom to verify. No, it is not canvas. So, okay, the next best thing is this floral print one. 
is on canvas. So I'm gonna use this floral print one. This one's a brand new collection. This is for the fall winter 2022. This is the LV Garden. For this handbag, it is 2,310 US dollars. Um, that is interesting. Okay, so let's go to the pre-love markets. I do actually have the pouch with it. And if I was to sell it, I think I would sell the combo rather than keep one or the other. Found this one that is in excellent condition. I actually don't really use my Neverfull. I have used it. I have really much enjoyed it whenever I have used it, but it's not my daily bag and I don't really use it too much in my rotation just because I feel like it's more like a collector's piece and something that I really do enjoy whenever I am using. I just, it's not my everyday bag. <laughs> so I deem it to be in excellent condition. So according to this reading here in Fashion File, for an excellent condition, game on Neverfull and the MM size is $2,195. So lucky for me, I actually do have my receipt inside of my bag. So this was, oh, this is perfect. So this was, let's see, this was 2,170 US dollars plus a tax. That is how much the Never Full Game On with the pouch in the MM size was whenever I got it. It didn't go up to too much compared to the current pricing and my Game On is a 2020 handbag. However, in the pre-love markets, I'm pretty much making even money or even less. So I'm taking a little bit of a loss with this limited edition piece and it could be the prints. Typically, a lot of the limited edition pieces by Louis Vuitton do kind of retain their value because they are made and released least in limited quantities. Collectors over time decide after they've been phased out or all sold out that they want it. So some of them do gain in price, kind of like the Steven Sprouse collections or even like the wild cherries and the blossoms. So from what I'm saying, not all limited edition pieces will gain or retain their value. So even though it is in Fashion Vio is 2,195 US dollars, it's still a little bit of a loss for me because they have to make some money but it's good for you if you're looking for one and you missed out because it's pretty relative to what you would have paid brand new from the store so a win if you're shopping pre-love but not if you currently own it um take that as you will let's go on to the next handbag which actually is another never full so i keep this one in the dust bag this is my never full in the mm size in the damir event prints with the red interior this one my very first louis vuitton handbag and the price when we got this was a whopping 940 dollars that is before taxes so we were just a little bit over one thousand dollars after taxes for this handbag and it's almost 10 years old keep in mind whenever i did get this one it did not come with the pouch that it does now so looking at it current pricing it might be a little bit of cheating but i mean what can i do like we get the bag for the bag and hopefully not so much because it comes with a pouch currently retails for 2030 us dollars even though this one is very old i redid the handles you can see a little bit of creasing i did it some years back so it is is creasing still that's one of the downsides about getting it in this particular print i know it's a lot of people's favorites but after having it for so many years just know things like that can happen. So I would say that this is in maybe very good condition. It does have somewhere in the corners on the inside. There's nothing wrong with the inside, um, literally. So in the pre-love markets, for some reason, I feel like the Damir event holds its value just a little bit more than the other two. So there's a little bit of warping here. And as you can tell, mine does not have any warping like that top trimming right here sits by itself so i'm gonna bypass that one okay so here's one this one doesn't say that it's neo it does say that it is in very good condition which is what i would rate mine and it is for 1290 us dollars now i'm just gonna click on this one just to make sure it does not have the pouch because i don't have a pouch either wow it has a lot of liquid marks which mine does not has a lot of fraying too, which mine does not. So we're gonna go back and pick another one because I don't have any liquid marks in my handbag. If you can see it, it's probably the shadows. 
Maybe just a tiny bit of staining, but I don't have any liquid marks. Another one in very good condition. Let's see that it does not have the pouch. Okay, perfect. So this one seems to be comparable with mine. Uh, the handle is pretty beat up compared to mine. It's retailing for 1,250 US dollars in the pre-loved markets. So if you buy it brand new from the store, it nearly like doubled or just a little bit more, which is insane. But it has also been about 10 years. Typically Louis Vuitton does not hold on to styles for that long unless they become iconic. I think the number four premiered in like 2007, around that time. So for it to be out still in 2022, it's a good thing if you own one if you are looking to buy this handbag in very excellent condition i think the pre-love market has good pricing compared to what you would pay retail and like i've showed you i had mine for such a long time so even if you do get one that's in about the same condition or better it's gonna last you a very very long time so you'll still be getting some worth out of your money if you go the pre-love route if you're looking for a damir event go the pre-love route if you don't want to pay the retail but if you are looking for a monogram or a damir azor go just straight to the store if you want that full vichetta experience so the number four is not a bad one it, it is a steady increase but don't expect to make all of your money back or don't expect to make more than what you paid for in my instance i am making just a little bit of more money because i did pay 940 dollars so many years ago but like for me it's not worth me selling it just because it's a phenomenal handbag and it's in very good, good condition i have a lot of life left in my handbag so if you do have one and you are thinking about selling it just kind of weigh those pros and cons if you were to have you know seller's remorse and want to buy it again you are going to be wasting your money just a little bit so just keep that in mind and let's move on to the next handbag which is a pochette matisse this is my pochette matisse it's in a limited edition color wow that took me a while to say but this is my beautiful at least i think navy nacre pochette matisse this is a navy metallic shade and the hardware is in a silver tone still in a shiny finish but just like a regular pochette matisse just in this limited edition shade in the interior it is it's like a, a denim blue suede material that's how i can describe the color but this is um one of my most beautiful handbags i feel like i used to have it in the rouge navy combination which i'll pop a video link for that one down below if you're interested in my review of about the pochette matisse okay so currently for a limited edition pochette matisse they only just about have this giant monogram one with the two-tone colors i'm gonna go with that one because it's not canvas and it's not the my world tour and this 1854 edition is not leather it's like a cotton textile kind of fabric material and then the pochette matisses that are in that solid combination these are their you know their everyday colors and the interior for these are in the textile which mine is in that suede the more fun variation which is this arizona beige monogram by color emprunt leather pochette matisse currently retails for 2980 us dollars i'm just gonna quickly go through the photos and yep so this one does have the same interior as mine in that microfiber suede inside. So again, 2,980 US dollars. If this was available, that's what you would expect to pay. Fashion file, they don't seem to have a navy nacre pochette matisse. So I am going to look for just navy and see actually i'm just gonna look for a pochette matisse and then we'll just look for a limited edition version that is not a my world tour or that braided one. Ooh, this one's fun but i think this one is not in a leather so i'm gonna keep looking this one that giant monogram which is like the one we just compared it to on the LV site. So this one is currently retailing for $3,195 and it's currently on sale. I've seen this in person and it's quite lovely. They actually had it whenever I picked this one, but this one had that silver tone hardware and that metallic just kind of, I don't know, it was perfect. So I got that one instead. I do have an unboxing of that down below. So yeah, if I was to get this in the pre-love market, I would be paying $3,195 
$1,000 in store. It is $2,980. Whenever I got this one, it was $2,730. US dollars. Again, I'm gonna link the unboxing video down below just to keep me honest, but I believe that is what the price of it was. I haven't had it for too, too long, so it's not like terribly old, but it hasn't really increased in price too, too much in the actual store. So if you are looking to get a Pochette Matisse in a fun variation, they do have reasonable price increases when it comes to the Pochette Matisse. Of course, not compared to the canvas. I think the canvas just kind of saw a significant an increase compared to the Emprunt leathers. But knowing that Louis Vuitton wants to just shift over to leathers more rather than canvas, while that does make the canvas Pochette Matisse a little bit more desirable, just because it may or may not be phased out at some point in time, I personally don't think it will be. But um, if it is, you know, it might skyrocket the price for the canvas versions in the pre-love markets. However, if you do want a little bit of luxe at not a bad price for Louis Vuitton, their Emprunt versions of the pochette matisse are pretty nice i haven't had the canvas version i did kind of contemplate about getting the giant reverse monogram version of the pochette matisse but so far my experience with the pochette matisse has been in the leathers only which they're very good they're very durable just pros and cons between the canvas and the leathers right canvas it can crack as itself just by opening and closing that flap whereas with the leather it's going to extend the life of your pochette matisse just a little bit more because leather itself is a little bit more pliable compared to canvas in the pre-love markets, the Pochette Matisse and limited edition versions do see a significant price increase. So for that reason, I am going to say that it is a good investment if you want to go with a limited edition Pochette Matisse. Sticking with the pochettes, I don't have another pochette mentees, but I do have the pochette accessoires. I actually have the trio or the trifecta of them. So I have it in the Damir Azor prints. I have it in the monogram and my strap is not hooked on. And then I have it in the Damir Ibn. The Damir Ibn is the one that I got first. It was like seven years ago, I want to say. It was $500 flat. That was that price. I think this was $520 whenever I got this one and then this one right here I'll have to double check but nonetheless it retails for 1290 US dollars it's not available in the Damir Ebin but it is available in the Azor and you can actually place in carts at least at the time of this recording the Pachet Accessories is one of those highly sought after pieces now I think it's available in cards because one, there's a lot of talk about going into a recession or we are in a recession. Personally, I think we have been in a recession, but the Pochette Accessoires is one of those hard to find or get pieces. And I've actually noticed that quite a few pieces in general have been in stock. It could be just the price increase. Quite honestly, I do not think I would pay the 1,290 US dollars the handbag is worth in retail. It is a great bag. It's a phenomenal bag. You can wear it the shoulder the, as a wristlet, as a clutch, as a crossbody. So it does have versatility, but it's $1,300 and you can get another bag from another fashion house or you can put that money towards a bigger bag. It's a lot of money in my opinion, but this is probably the best price you're going to get because we're going to double check in the pre-love sites. I want to say it's going to be a little bit more. So just by judging based on the current retail, price these pieces for me have been an investment piece in particular with the Damir Ibn version this one actually invested in it I bought the I think this is a 16 millimeter strap and I've been trying to get it in the Vachetta to be able to use it with my monogram and my Damir Azor Pichet Accessoires but that is one item I cannot get online and I have asked about it in store I was in Hawaii a few months ago for a vacation and they actually said that they weren't selling that anymore because Louis Vuitton did not like how people were using it in other items and just completely transforming the pieces which in my opinion when it comes to this in particular I would not be mad about that now I, I see how they might have thought it was a loss on their end by not including the strap they probably could have had it at a higher price point but really and truly like it's not like I'm trying to get an off 
off-market strap and use it with my authentic piece if that makes any sense like I'm trying to get an actual piece from Louis Vuitton to use it with my Louis Vuitton piece already and if it, if it was such a big deal then why do they sell straps you know anyway that's my little rant about the straps because I actually think this is a reason why I've used this significantly more than my other two because of that strap other two I've just kind of held on to I've used this one more than this one I think on my last review it was backwards where I was using this one more than this one but I've kind of eased up on this one I'm like I'm just going to enjoy the piece I'm never gonna be able to get the strap this was actually my handbag whenever I was in Hawaii and very fitting it is very spring very coastal very just beautiful and it wears very well with a lot of different colors I'm gonna be looking for a pochette accessories in the NM version for the monogram I'm gonna look for an excellent condition and I found one here if you would buy the monogram pochette accessories in the pre-love markets it is 1290 US dollars but it's available on the US website so just get it brand new now my Azure piece there's three options here I'm gonna go with the lower price one so for the Damir Azure version in the pre-love market it is 1040 us dollars so still a investment piece it's an investment for me because i did get it far down in the price all under like 600 700 dollars um so they were investments for me if you're just trying to get this brand new and you're going with the pre-love markets look at it in store or at the actual lv website because even for this one being a thousand forty dollars because of the vachetta i would say just get the full experience brand new from the store you're gonna love it you're gonna enjoy it you're gonna have it much longer and in this one it's going for just about the same price so get it brand new from the store this one has seen a lot of wear there is some spraying on my zipper end here and my hardware is a little bit tarnished the corners the corners are actually in phenomenal condition the canvas is still fantastic the inside is still red i don't have any watermarks because obviously you can't fit like a water bottle in here or anything i do have the original strap right here I'm gonna see what I could get and I think well, they only have one I mean they have this one I don't it this one doesn't look like it's a new model it looks like it's the older version just because of the shape like if we compare it to the one next to it it's more rectangular and this one's a little bit more flat but I'm just gonna go with this one they have it retail for 1350 so obviously all of these can range pretty significantly in pricing but so far for me they have been an investment piece so if you are looking into these do not do the pre-love market they're currently available in the Louis Vuitton website go straight to there or go to your sales associate it or you know the store if you don't have one it's better to just get it brand new from what i'm seeing so for me they were an investment if you get it brand new from the store it's gonna be an investment for you too just hold on to it and wait for it and it has tons of versatility so that is the push it asses horse in the nm size moving on to my artsy this is by far the biggest bag that i own even more so bigger than my neverfull but nonetheless is very luxe to the extreme for a monogram piece and it's gonna look a little bit crazy I still have the rivets covered in plastic and then I have these cloths these are where you get like your jewelry from basically what I'm using this for is to make sure that the rings don't oxidize and leave a marking on the leather so just a storing tip if you do also have an art seat or a handbag like this but nonetheless this is my huge handbag the most biggest yet comfortable that I have in my collection the interior is that microfiber suede she is a 2020 one handbag i think i just checked the date code it was made in 2020 but i got it in 2021 like the very first week i think it was like january 4th that i got it so they were gonna do a price increase like january 7th so i had been like pretty much asking about this bag for weeks hard to find primarily because of the christmas season people start buying like in november and december i couldn't get this one right whenever i wanted it so i was just checking in with my sales associate that i work with and she 
finally just got one in stock right after Christmas, which actually that is when I got my monogram Pache accessories, like after Christmas. So if you're looking for something, just wait until after and you'll probably be able to get it. But she was like, why do you want it? It's such a huge bag. Like every time I would try it on in store, like the model, it was more than likely the opera style, but I wanted the monogram. This is one of those nostalgia pieces for me that I saw whenever I was younger and I just fell in love with the handbag and I'm like, I want that. I want it. I have it with the leather right here and whenever I first fell in love with it, it did not have that, but this is that newer version. Nonetheless, I love this braided handle right here. Where I got the Artsy, it retailed for $2,100, but I think it was just $2,100 flat. Right now, retail from the store, if you want to get it brand new, is $2,500. I got it just a year ago for $1,100, so it has gone up in price, which is a good thing if you own the Artsy. And mine is in excellent condition or like brand new condition, so I am just going to filter for that and then i'm gonna look for a, a monogram i'm actually gonna look for the more expensive one just because I would classify mine as brand new 2335 this one actually looks like it has a patina okay we're just gonna go with the other one this is more like my handbag like the actual condition and everything it was for $25.95 and it is on sale for $24.65 just a tad bit under retail if you want the bag and you just cannot get it from the store I would say okay but I would say be careful because when you're buying Monogram or Damir Azor or untreated Vachetta in the pre-loved market, keep in mind that the lighting of the photos and the editing, if there is editing, can make the leather look either newer or older, just depends. So that's one thing I would caution you about. So it's not so much price difference between in-store versus pre-loved. So if you can get it brand new for the, you know, $50, $90 difference, just get it brand new from the store so from what i'm seeing the the artsy is not a bag that is an investment piece so it's gonna be a handbag that you would get because you really really want it to be a part of your collection kind of going steady or at face value i will say there was a time where big bags were in style and then they just started getting medium and smaller and mini and bb <laughs> so i i kind of sense that now big bags are they're coming back like we're slowly getting into that medium size again and maybe into that large at some point in time even though it's a big handbag nonetheless very gorgeous very beautiful very timeless for Louis Vuitton all right so this handbag I know I was kind of like the artsy it's a beauty it's it's fantastic it's beautiful to look at but this one right here this is the trevi pm in the damir Eben canvas this hardware is phenomenal it is what louis vuitton hardware should be i have a review on this handbag already which i'll link down below and i've talked about the hardware in there whenever i wear this it's like a showstopper like that gold it's like almost glitter it is amazing i actually got this pre-owned it was discontinued in 2015 this handbag is a 2014 so it's almost 10 years old but it is phenomenal like look at my corners i mean whatever wear you can pick up actually i think that's the light yeah definitely the light because i don't have anything there Whatever wear you can pick up is, is still in excellent condition. My hardware is not tarnishing. The zipper kind of is, but like the rivets here and even on my handles, fantastic. My handles, these handles, I feel like they were made even better better than even my even this one right here of course they're different materials so i guess i can't compare it too too much but anyways this is my trevi she has a luscious interior she also has feet just like the artsy so i got it from fashion file and i paid 1335 dollars it was in excellent condition got it in 2020 one of the things that kind of stopped me from buying mine so many years back was the fact that the interior is microfiber suede and odors can penetrate um, powders can get deep in there found that a lot of the handbags had those as a flaw like from the outside they look immaculate but from the inside it was a little bit dingy so it took me some time to find the perfect one and wow it was terribly hard but i finally did find it and i'm happy i love my trevi so i'm just looking on the pre-love market and they don't have any in excellent condition so just based on what it looks like from the outside 
I think either this one, uh, I think that one has like some scratches there. I'm gonna go with this one. This one, they have it currently for $905. So if it's a handbag that you're interested in, I think this one's a good one. I haven't reviewed all the images, but based on all the other ones that are available, that one seems to be the best available. And it's in the PM size, like this other one at the top is a GM. From what I understand, the GM is significantly bigger. Um, so this one, if it was to be brand new in the website, it would be 1130 and they have it in sale for $905. So I'm going to go with that 1130 price. I have actually lost money in my Trevi and I think it, it kind of goes back to the artsy situation where a lot of people don't like big bags and the Trevi itself, it's smaller at the top but it has that silhouette to where the bottom, like she's got a big booty kind of situation. So because of that, I think a lot of people shy away from handbags like that. Apart from this handbag, whenever I wear the Trevi PM, gosh, compliments, stares, it's so gorgeous and beautiful to look at. For me, not only do I love top handles, it does have a strap if I want to wear it as shoulder. I cannot wear it as crossbody. Of course, I do have the strap for my push it accessories that I could add in there and incorporate. But at that point in time, it's such a large bag to where if I was to do it crossbody, it, it doesn't look good. It'll be like this, like a block, maybe like a duffel bag sort of situation. And it's not a good look for every day. That shoulder strap that it does have, it's much thicker than this one. You see? The Louis Vuitton quality back then, they know what they were doing. It's one of those pieces that you you would get it because you like it and not so much because you want to make money off of it. For me, it was a dream bag as well. Terribly happy that I have it in my collection. I enjoy using it. So for me, it is worth it. If you're trying to buy it, obviously in the pre-love market because you can't get it in store. 905 bucks, you're getting a bargain. I'm losing money, but you're getting a good deal. <laughs> so keep that in mind. For your current self versus your future self, you're not going to be able to make money in the long run. But right now, it's a good price. I think whenever it was still available in store, it was $2,300. Yeah, if you bought it in store, you took a loss. It was not an investment piece whatsoever, but I think it has to do with the trends. For me, it's personally worth it. It's not good for your money. You're gonna lose money in it. So I know that was a lot, but that is tried and true honesty for the Trevi PM. I keep wanting to name it PM, but it's the Trevi PM named after the Trevi fountain in Italy. So a little bit of background there. So if you're trying to get a handbag that is compatible to the Trevi PM in store currently, there's not a lot of options. I think the only one I would recommend it's probably the the Alma in the PM size. That one is it's similar in the sense to where it has the feet at the bottom. The interior's different. Trevi has the microfiber suede interior. Alma does not. It has the textile, but the Alma has that structure feel to it and it, it kind of is a little bit similar in the sense to where it's smaller at the top and then it kind of gets a little bit bigger from here to here. Not that extreme, but just about the same. So if you are looking for something, the Alma is something I would recommend. You can't really go wrong with the Alma because it's so timeless. It's a silhouette for the fashion house that's been around longer than the Neverfull or the Odeon Tote mm size this is actually good for size comparison that size is pretty much the same size as the trevi so that's another option that's two thousand two hundred and thirty dollars whereas the alma pm which i think is the most comparable to that one is a thousand nine hundred and eighty so just under two thousand dollars so it's really up to you whether you want the strap because this one does come with the strap alma you're just getting the bag by itself in that cloche at the in the front those are the only two options that are pretty close to the trevi be currently in the store or available for purchase straight from Louis Vuitton. So moving on to my last item. This is a very iconic style to the Louis Vuitton fashion house. This is the Speedy. I have it in the Bandelier version. This is a size 30 in the Damir Ebin canvas. The interior is textile lining. I got this handbag from Paris in 2018. It's been a love. Even though it's four years old, it has a lot of wear. A lot, a lot. And yes, I've used it a lot 
thoughts. I can't justify the wear that it has versus how much I've used it. Like mine never full, I used it a lot, a lot, a lot. And it looks a little bit newer than this. And it could be that the Neverfull doesn't have a lot of hardware like this one does because most of mine is tarnished. But nonetheless, I love this handbag. I would buy it again, maybe in the non-Bondelier version just because I want to have that classic look. And just because I do like top handles, I do use it with the extra strap. Most of the time, this is a top handle handbag for me. I don't have a organizer with it. So it pretty much has held its shape very well what is this worth right now from the louis vuitton store so currently the speedy 30 in the damir van with the vandalier version in store it is 1890 us dollars this one was from paris and in paris their pricing is different than the us it was 30 percent whenever i went back in 2018 um so 30 off of the retail price at the time i want to say i paid between 1200 and 1300 maybe like 1250 I'll have to look back in the receipts and I'll report back just before the end of the video what exactly was the pricing. So if you are looking into buying this one, I know it's a little bit hard to swallow the $1,890 price knowing that it was cheaper three, four, five years ago when you probably had your eyes on it first. Keep in mind, it will continue to go up and it is a style that is not going to be discontinued or at least something that I don't see being discontinued yet. Currently in the pre-love market, I actually think this is more of a good condition rather than a very good just because it does have some wear in the corners and my hardware is tarnished at the inside it's very good very perfect there's no stains no nothing like that but it does have a lot of corner wear and that's something that i see a lot with speedies the corners is where it shows the wear and particularly in this print so when looking at the pre-love market i'm gonna look for a good condition one but we'll see what is available so i'm just gonna go with this top one they have it for 1395 dollars it is a little bit of a savings compared to in store and quite honestly for the damir event speedy this price is a good price because it's something that takes a long time to show wear compared to the untreated vachetta again do look at the corners and do look at the hardware when you are considering it pre-loved but if you're okay with not buying it brand new from the store i think you can get some savings and a good deal from the pre-loved market it's not an investment it is something that is very steady with the market just because it's something louis vuitton makes all the time so it's not like the price is gonna be up here in the pre-love market because it's something you can walk into the store and get it today if you wanted to right so it's something that is always going to be even so you're probably going to make your money back if you take x exceptional care of your handbag but most of the time you are going to take a little bit of a hit just because it's something i can go get from the store brand new if i wanted to right so keep that in mind with the speedy b at least i don't have a classic speedy version but that one probably holds its value just a little bit more than the vandalier just because you don't have that extra hardware to show the discoloration in the brass tones or even the vachetta on the sides if you are looking into an azor or a monogram that also will contribute to where I do think the classics hold their value a little bit more than the Vandalier, but still nonetheless is not a bad buy if you do want to get it in the pre-love market. So I tallied off of my pricing. Um, I'm gonna go through my what I paid. Um, so I was actually looking at some of the receipts for this. I paid $480. I actually just saw the receipt and I already forgot. $480 or $490. One of the two for this. That is amazing. It's one of a great value for sure. I had down my Artsy as $2,100. I actually paid $2,180. My Damir Azor, it was actually from Mexico. The price there was um, $9,568 pesos plus their VAT, which came out to $11,100. 100 pesos so i'm just gonna convert it down to dollars using 20 uh, pesos per dollar so that is 11 100 divided by 20 so that is 555 dollars so still not bad my monogram i thought it was 700 and something i actually paid 630 for that monogram push it as a source so there goes that okay my speedy b that one was 1040 euros 1040 euros so that is 1059 or for my speedy b wow i'm pretty sure inflation has a lot to do with that because i think whenever i 
first got it and then I converted over the price. It was close to like $1,200. I'm just gonna keep it at a thousand. It's a thousand fifty nine. I'm just gonna say a thousand sixty. So let me tally back up what I paid and then we're gonna see whether or not our luxury handbags worth the investment. Um, of course, this is not overnight. This is nine, almost 10 years worth of collecting. Keep that in mind. These prices I'm gonna give you are prices excluding tax or VAT. It is just the bare bone what I paid pre-tax. Um, it's also pre-tax for um, Louis Vuitton.com and pre-tax for any of the pricing that I pulled from Fashion File. My handbag collection, I paid um, 14610 in total based on the prices that I got each of the pieces for. Um, and that is including uh, my Trevi PM that I had to buy pre-love because it wasn't available. Um, so that's all of my handbags put together, so 14,610 US dollars pre-tax. If I was to get everything from the store right now, that is excluding the Damir Abin accessories because you can't get that, it's discontinued, and also excluding the Travi PM. If I was to say, hey, I want all of these um, without those two that are discontinued, I would pay $17,390, again, excluding tax. If I was to needing to sell my handbag collection for whatever reason, based on the fashion file pricing that I can go based off of selling privately, it would be 18,380 US dollars. So comparing the three numbers, the 14, 610, and the current store price of uh, 17,390, and the uh, pre-love prices currently, or the market value for my collection, 18,380, it is from what I paid to the market price. It is $3,770, so that is gain. What what I'm winning. So overall, that's pretty much in these, to be honest. Most of that value or that gain is on these. And then on the Pichette Matisse and the Navy Nacre, that is pretty much where it's coming from. Most of my other bags were pretty much a loss with the exception of my on the go. That one was a good value as well and rather an investment piece. Whenever you are looking at handbags, just kind of know some pieces you can make your money back off. A lot of the times you are going to be taking a little bit of a hit hits you actually make more money when you are talking about chanel or even hermes those are pretty much the only two that will hold their value and skyrocket and you can double or triple in some cases your money for louis vuitton if you do have any of the capucines bags those would be some that i think might hold their value they don't really sell too too well currently in the pre-love market now i i've seen that a lot of their leathers in some months back they were like the cheapest thing like cheaper than canvas but now they're kind of going up there so i don't know if it's because of the shift that louis vuitton's trying to make that the pre-love's trying to catch up to that as well but just you know a tidbit if you want any leather handbags by louis vuitton but you don't want to pay that retail price look in the pre-love market because there could be some really good ones there just you know look at everything if you have made it this far thank you thank you for spending a little bit of your day with me because i know i spoke about a lot and some of the things that a lot of people are interested in at least whenever they're talking about handbags is like let's get down to the money so i hope that this was able to give you a good perspective of what i paid versus if i was to walk into the store and get it all back because it was stolen it was in a fire or what have you what i would pay now and then if i had to sell what is the money that i could make it's not significant but again it's a lot of money still in the grand scheme of things when you put them all together let me know if you have any questions or your thoughts down in the comments. I uh, hope you have a wonderful day and thank you so much for spending your time with me. See you next time. Goodbye.